Excitement in the kitchen. Say, let's see the excitement. All right. Just you come along with me and I'll show it to you. Hello, I'm Jonathan, otherwise known as Senor Smoke, here at Curdo's in Westchester County. I want to welcome you to my pre-Thanksgiving video blog post. Yes, we are celebrating all things having to do with the great turkey today. This is my turkey uh, prop over here. And uh, it's supposed to be a 25 pounder. It's a little deflated. It's probably down to about 15, 16 pounds now. We'll have to help him out. But anyway, um, I want to talk about smoking bird uh, because that is, I don't, I don't host Thanksgiving, so I unfortunately can't cook uh, the big bird um, on this, uh, the, the feast day. And what I've done the last couple of years instead is I have cooked a pre Thanksgiving turkey the weekend before. So last year, 2015, I used the Memphis grill. It was actually one of my first cooks with the Memphis, and I smoked a large bird. I think it was about 18 pounds, uh, at least for my, my smallish family, and uh, did a pretty, good, pretty, pretty damn good job. I mean, the Memphis grill, it's really um, set it and forget it, very easy to use. It's like an oven, and uh, I did a good job with that, and there's probably some pictures floating by right now of the uh, results. But this year I decided to do something different. I wanted to break out my Kamado Joe, which I really, I don't want to say I abandoned it, but I just, you know, I, I didn't really use it as much this summer. Uh, this was really the summer of the Alfresco and continuing to use the Memphis in all of its incredible versatility. So I got the Kamado Joe and I think um, uh, I had a great, um, I had a great vision for what this was going to turn into. And I can tell you, as I'm just a very transparent dude, um, I semi ruined the bird. So what I'm going to talk about today is how not, how not to smoke your turkey um, if you are using, and you could be big green egg fans, Primo uh, fans, um, whoever, whatever Kamado vessel that you're using, you can actually learn from this video as well. It's not just for the Kamado Joe users, but the problem with the smoke, because I, I had it all going. I had, I was at 200, it was a, let me backtrack for a second. The bird was about 12 pounds. It was small. So we were at a steady 275 degrees and I smoked it for three hours. Now, maybe it should have only been two, whatever, but it was three hours at 275 um, and it was a pecan smoked uh, uh, bird. So I had pecan chunks in there, which is actually is phenomenal. Okay, and I've never used pecan before and now it's gonna be one of my go-to choices of uh, wood. But the reason why I ruined it, I don't want to say I ruined it, but it didn't come out great, is because I didn't use this, okay? This is a heat shield, ceramic heat shield. This is very, very important, very important for you Kamado users, okay? Um, now, I understand that for some folks, it would just be, it wouldn't be an afterthought of using the ceramic heat shields. In all of the videos that I looked at on the web, uh, yes, most people use them, but I just said to myself, you know, I'm gonna be at a relatively low temperature, 275 degrees. Um, there is a drip pan in the coals as well. Maybe I don't need to use this. And you know what? I should have. Because what happened was, after the three hours was up and I pulled the bird off, man, did it look pretty, okay? But, but I noticed that the breast meat was definitely dry. Now, the legs and the wings were fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Probably better than they were the year before when I cooked on the Memphis Grill because on the Kamado, you're getting direct flame, okay? You're getting that direct wood smoke. Um, you know, it's, it, it, it's just simply phenomenal. I mean, there's nothing that can replace cooking live over wooden fire, but the lack of the heat shields definitely just allowed more heat to get up to the bottom of the bird and then just filter throughout and overcook the breasts. So the good thing was, was that, um, not that they were inedible because they were, and the next day when we made turkey breast sandwiches, it was fantastic. So I don't wanna say I ruined it, but I would just tell you, especially with just spending this type of money on a larger bird in particular, um, and you're investing this time because let's quite frankly, you know, it's not coming off in a half an hour and 45 minutes. This is a process. 
you want to make sure everything is buttoned up and especially if you're having 20 some odd people over um, you don't want to ruin things so the number one thing is to absolutely you got to use the heat shields when you're smoking um, and, and particularly with the turkey I, I I'm going to do this again actually and we're going to probably have some people over in the period between uh, Christmas and uh, uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas and I'm going to smoke the turkey again and unquestionably we will be using the heat shield so the setup would be as follows um, I'd get the turkey I did brine it for 24 hours I rubbed it down with a poultry rub that I have and uh, stuffed it with lemon. Actually, no, I didn't do lemons on this one. Various herbs and seasonings in the inside and put it directly on the grates, nothing underneath it. We'll now have on the second level the heat shields and then underneath we're gonna have a drip tray. Um, I mean, actually in this case, I don't need the drip tray because the shields are there. So we'll probably just use the charcoal and uh, the lump charcoal and then some pecan wood. Now, this brings us to the second point that I would absolutely, you must pay attention to this because it's overlooked in many cases. The fuel that you use, the lump charcoal, is incredibly, incredibly important because I did not use the Kamado Joe branded charcoal, which is fantastic. I, in I instead used, um, oh man, I forgot the name of it. It's a very, very popular brand. It has, it's red, it has a bunch of cowboys sitting around a campfire drinking. Um, it's all over the place. You can find it at supermarkets. This charcoal is lousy, okay? First of all, there's way too much powder and dust in it. It doesn't burn clean. It doesn't burn long. I've had this issue as well with the Alfresco and my solid fuel insert. When I use this type of charcoal in there, um, <coughs> it burns out way too quickly. The Kamado Joe burns cleaner. It doesn't give off as much acrid smoke and it, it maintains the burn for a much, much, much longer period of time. So. Two things to take away. Number one, use your heat shields. They're very important. But number two, this is so fundamental. The fuel that you use is so, so important. You have to approach it with the same degree of care and diligence as when you go select the meat that you're gonna use, okay? I mean, your grill is very important, but let's face it, the fundamentals are where you're getting your meat from. Is it raised properly, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What kind of seasonings are you using? These are all fundamental building blocks of having an incredible cook, but the fuel that you're using is so important as well. And I have now bitten the apple and gotten a worm numerous times now because the fuel that I've been using, it, it, it's just, it's, it's no good. So, um, and I'm not going to sit here and just pitch Kamado Joe lump charcoal at you. I mean, I do sell it. It is great. There's other brands as well. You can get crazy with lump hardwood charcoal. Some of these organic brands that one out of St. Louis, uh, whose name escapes me right now, uh, the Wicked Charcoal, whatever, out of New England, is supposedly phenomenal, quite expensive, but don't ignore the fundamentals. Good charcoal, good fuel, use your heat shields, select the right type of bird, and don't go too crazy. Okay. Have a great Thanksgiving, enjoy the pics in the video, and much, much more to come. Thank you.